I started sharing love stories with you guys, whenever I could get a story like this, I used to be like, oh my God, I wish they met online dating apps. <laughs> then my subscribers could have loved the video so much <laughs> but after sharing and sharing different love stories i came into a conclusion that every love story is different and you have got something to learn from it that is why today i'm bringing you this unique beautiful love story of an interracial couple the lady is from congo by the name of safi and the guy is from the netherlands the dutch guy by the name of alex so they will be sharing their love story with you guys on how they met like i said before in every love story you have got something to learn from it so as today's love story because this couple is such a strong christian couple that oh my god it's gonna inspire you very very much through their love journey the challenges that they faced and also through Safi's past love relationship experience as a woman who is out there searching for love whether online or offline, you are going to learn a lot. But do you know what, guys? Something that is very, very exciting. Alex shared with you some online dating tips. Very important, <laughs> helpful online dating tips that when you finish this video, you will get something new. <laughs> yeah, I can assure you that. And without wasting much of your time, talking too much <laughs> let me welcome this beautiful interracial couple to share their love story with you welcome Sophie and alex hi darlings welcome my name is Sophie. i am here to share my love story that i hope will inspire encourage and motivate whoever's watching me today so before I met my friend, my love, my husband, I was in a relationship with an African man and everything started off beautiful. Everything was amazing, rosy, and you name it. It was promises after promises. So I met the guy and he, he was introduced to me through a friend and, um, we started chatting and we started to get to know each other bit by bit to the point of him meeting my family and paying the bride price. Yes, I was engaged to him. And after the bride price was paid, we were making arrangements for the wedding. Now, within the whole engagement, we were getting to obviously know each other better every single day because we we're spending a lot of time together. And he was very abusive, verbally, emotionally. And I ended the relationship when it became physical. So it was just a few months before the wedding that I ended the relationship. And guys, I'm so happy and very proud of Safi to end the relationship with that toxic guy. Even if they were planning to get married, even if the guy engaged her, she was courageous enough to say, it's over. I can't keep on taking all this. So we should learn from her, guys. Never ever accept to be mistreated by a guy just in the name of marriage. No, guys. No, no, it's not worth it. Hi, I'm Alex and I'm here to share a little bit of my story, uh, my side of, the, of my and our story. Uh, I've been many moons ago <laughs> in a long relationship, I uh, was married and out of that came two beautiful, uh, sweet and gorgeous girls and uh, after that marriage, uh, also very many moons ago, <laughs> uh, when it broke uh, I've been single for long and yes I've been dating like I think everyone and looking for Mrs. Wright and some look and find straight away and I looked and didn't find straight away so yes I dated uh, 
some, some say a lot, some say a little, it's for everybody is different. Um, that African, African ladies uh, have been in a relationship also and relationship sort of, for me it was never my missus right, what I could find until one certain moment and then the story continues. So after we broke up, I took time to just give myself uh, to God. I always give myself to God. But after that relationship, I needed to just hear from God himself, like what it is that he wanted me to learn from that experience and where I was heading. So I was not thinking of getting into a relationship. I was not thinking of meeting somebody the next day or the next year. I was very, very hurt because I had invested a lot in my previous relationship. And down the road, my prayers started changing into, Lord, you know what? If I have to uh, get into a relationship, I do not want my past experience, meaning I do not want to repeat history with what had happened. So my preference in men has always been white. I'm just being very honest with you. And have I ever dated a white guy before my husband? Yes, I did. Have I ever thought of marrying a white man before my husband? Yes, I did. Why did I fall in love and why was I involved with a with an African man? I don't know. It happened. <laughs> it happened. But after that whole experience, that's where my shift went towards. I was like, Father, you know what? I think maybe that's where I need to be. That's where my preference is. So, yeah. After my experience, uh, long time experience with uh, Caucasian local, I come up from a very uh, white neighborhood, white area. Uh, I was interested uh, in other cultures. So uh, holidays also abroad. And after that, I was also dating uh, Latina and after that also African. And especially the African that, that caught my heart. Uh, the culture, the just, yeah, everything. Also food, but a lot of things. Beauty, uh, I think African. I was also very interested. Uh, but, okay, if I might find my missus right, I will bring her over the shoulder and walk away with her. So I prayed and fasted and in 2015, in Johannesburg, South Africa, Ora Tambo, I met this guy. So I'm on my way to South Africa. There was a, uh, uh, from a friend, he has a uh, special uh, thingy going on nearby Cape Town. And I was there, went to, over there to help him. And on this airport, I'm walking there. Of course, my first time ever in in Africa and I'm looking there one whoa and then a the lady I see him no I didn't whistle but that was in my mind I look at her and she looked back and well okay then I turn around continue a bit then turn around round the head like you know those neck breakers hey eh? a lot of people know how that how that works and then she also turns and I said, she nicely packaged and I go, looks good. And I only had one thing in my mind, like happened before in my life when there was eye contact. I don't know if everyone relates to that. And after that, you never see that person anymore in your life. And this was eye contact. This not going to happen any, anymore to me. So I went after her and I, I dressed her, you know, complimenting about the beautiful eyes and try to get a little contact. I didn't have a lot of time because <laughs> I had a connecting. I had to go and, and then I just said, no, I don't have time. 
this is my number. If you like to get me know me a little bit better, because I like to get to you know, yeah, to, to get to know you a little bit better, give me a call or text me and then uh, see what happens. So, and then I had to rush away. And then later, I was leaving the country for work related and he was coming in of the country for work and vacation. He like had the whole package. So there, there I am checking in. And when I was, when I was done checking in, I now wanted to have something to eat. As I'm walking, looking for a place where I can just sit and eat something, I felt <laughs> eyes on me. And this guy was upstairs. Yeah. So I was downstairs. The airport is huge. He was up and I looked back and he was like, when I looked back, his eyes fixed on me. And I was like, okay, that, that was very weird. But I ignored it and then I carried on my way. But as he looked at me, he smiled and I was just like, hmm. <laughs> and I went my way. And after not even two minutes, Darlings, I tell you, there I see him coming down the escalators and then he approaches me and it's like, hi, my name is Alex. You have beautiful eyes. I was like, thank you so much. And, um, after that, he just started making conversation, asking me who I was, what was my name, where I was going. And I'm thinking, okay, there's just too many questions coming up here. And he says, listen, I don't have much time. I'm connecting a flight, but I would like to get to know you. Call me sometime. Here's my number. And as he gave me his card, I'm thinking to myself, is this how this guy picks up his woman? Because I'm not about, I'm not about that life. And I remember telling him that as well, like, if this is how you pick up your people, I don't do this. And he said, no, I really like to get to know you. And then I took the card because I was away for almost a month with my work travels. So after I contacted him, he was so happy. I was so happy. And then after three months, he came down. He came back to South Africa. So a while after I got a call, and South African number and he interesting and then we started to talk and after that we started to talk uh, a lot every day on the phone messaging uh, calling and yeah, then we uh, basically kicked it off and three months later I uh, stepped in the plane uh, to take uh, a couple of weeks to get it to really get to know each other good in a good way so and then uh, after that a lot of things happened but that was the, basically the kickstart of the relationship so i want to give you an advice here or add something to what safi has said if you are someone who believes in god and you're watching this video today trust me no matter how long it takes no matter which way, but the right guy will come. Keep praying to God. Tell him exactly what you want. Guys, I have lots of examples and you know me. When I start talking, <laughs> I will not finish. But let me give you this little example. It's like a miracle that happened. There is a lady I was helping on online dating apps. For quite some time now and oh my god she faced lots lots of challenges on her journey to find the one she got like three serious guys that she thought they were serious but eventually turned out that they were only playing games she was so heartbroken and was like bella what can i do but all the time i could tell her keep moving forward don't worry talk to god do you know what happened guys <laughs> just last week she sent me a photo i was like bella this is my boyfriend a miracle happened i did not meet this guy online no 
offline and i'll give you the story of how it all happened <laughs> yeah so what does that tell us that god listens so keep trusting in god do not worry of the challenges just tell him exactly what you want but he listens will answer at his own time and when he answers your prayers oh my god it's gonna be so beautiful it's gonna be epic <laughs> so dear beautiful ladies if you're at the point you feel so frustrated you feel like you're so down you feel like you will never find any man in your life remove that <laughs> and tell god i know god my time is coming please god bring that right man in my life tell him exactly what you want you know talk to him as a father if you remember kk's video was like i was talking to god like a daughter talking to the father like god why why is that everything is not working on my side <laughs> Because we also see how God listened to Safi and brought exactly what she prayed for. Told you that was interested in a white guy. It has always been her dream. And <laughs> God brought the right man in her life when she even least expected it, you know, at that airport. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Love is beautiful and God is good. So he came down after three months and we had good times together. We really enjoyed each other's company and we got to know each other more, more profoundly. And he was just amazing. The first question he asked me is um, if my parents, my family knew about him. And I was very honest with him. I told him, you know what? I will tell them when the time comes because I felt like it was still new. I felt like, you know, we just started this. Let's see where it first goes. Cause I remember my previous relationship. I introduced the guy to my parents and things happened. I was not comparing. I was just preserving myself, um, uh, from repeating history. I needed to first know, who this person is because obviously he comes from another country and yes he came after three months which was amazing but i still needed to know more before i could take her to my parents so dear friends i had to pause and add something here from safi's past love relationship experience we are learning something guys i told you in the past you guys that have been following me here on youtube watching my videos that if you're dating a guy never rush to introduce him to your family never rush to accept even that engagement if in your heart you who is dating that guy you have an intuition a woman's intuition is telling you that that guy is not the one something might not be right or the level that you are with that guy <laughs> you are dating but that level has not matured yet to an extent of you taking the guy to your parents. If you just take the guy to your parents, some of you might even force the guy, I want to introduce you to my parents. Or you're chatting with the guy, you're just getting to know each other, you'll be like, you have to first come here so that I can introduce you to my parents. But the truth is, the guy is just getting to know you and maybe also trying to get to know other ladies. So him coming to Africa, trying to get to know you, we take an example of Africa, but it can be maybe in Jamaica, in the Philippines, you know, wherever part of the world you are. So this guy comes as in getting to know you, but you force him because you are here, you must go see my parents. That is very, very wrong because that guy has got no problem. <laughs> it won't affect him at all. <laughs> First of all, he is not in his country. Nobody knows him. So he will go even if he's just there playing games with you. Of course, he will go with you to your parents and after his visit, he might even decide to block you. He might tell you things did not work. He might tell you there was no chemistry. 
but as a woman your self-esteem goes down because <laughs> Once you tell your parents, I imagine, let's take an example, you are in Africa, you're an African lady, you tell your parents, oh, I have a boyfriend, he's coming to visit, it's an introduction, and the parents prepare, you know, something like an introduction party, so the neighbors get to know, and <laughs> everything, you know, <laughs> becomes big. <laughs> Everyone thinks that, you know, you are engaged, whereby it was just an introduction. <laughs> if this guy disappears, it will disappoint your parents. It's going to embarrass you. I know the society around, they will be talking and talking. And if you get another boyfriend, you want to introduce him to your parents, it's going to be so difficult for your parents to accept that guy. So you will create another challenge to your new boyfriend. So why do all that to yourself? Take your time to know a guy, even if he comes in Africa, you are an adult, you can go and meet this guy, get to talk to him, get to understand how well is he prepared, you know, to be in that relationship. Understand what level your relationship is. <laughs> Are you just getting to know each other? Or the guy is really serious, wants marriage, wants to marry you, and he's so much in love with you. <laughs> then from there, you can decide the visit to your parents. You can decide to introduce him to your parents, but never rush. Please, please. It's very, very important. So my parents only knew about him after literally a year and a few months. That's when I took the time to let them know about Alex. But prior to that, they knew there was somebody. They just didn't know what was happening. But when I'll go home and visit, he will phone me. I'll be on face time with him and stuff and they will always want to know like who are you talking to what's happening i'll be like no it's just somebody that i'm getting to know but they didn't really know him in full so time was well spent we enjoyed every minute of it as he went back communication was still as it used to be until it declined a bit it just declined a bit so from calling me in the morning in the afternoon and checking in between how i was doing saying his good night having a conversation sharing our dreams our plans we want to see each other all of those good stuff it just declined and there were no explanation from this guy sometimes he's going to phone sometimes he's not going to call and sometimes when i phone he doesn't answer so for example i'll call at eight and then in the morning and then he's only gonna get back to me around 11 at night and I'll be like okay what is this first leave with me when we were in the relationship I did tell him that you know what I'm not in this for games I don't have time to play I need something serious I want to get married and I want to have children and 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 so he knew all of that and I also told him that I am not having sex with nobody until I'm married. So when we spoke about that and then he went back and then uh, these things were, were, were acting up. Obviously, as a woman, I would think to myself, okay, it's because I told this guy he's not going to get any goodies. So maybe that's why he's acting up this, this way. But... Yeah, that was the, that was the, the hardship of the long distance relationship. But prior all of that, it was going so well. He would spoil me with just like surprise me with gifts that will be delivered in my place i'll be like oh my goodness like on my birthdays and um he'll like uh, order cake he'll order drinks he'll <laughs> order a whole package of groceries and then it will come and get delivered at my place valentine's day he'll order chocolate he all the flowers and then it will come and get delivered at my place so he did really really spoil me until that declination that just started going down i was thinking to myself what is happening i told him if you do not know what you want 
Do not come and waste my time. So I ended the relationship because it was just too much. He was not communicating. So everything just died. He wasn't communicating like he used to. And like you ask questions, are you okay? What's happening? Just nothing. Everything just like went downhill. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to waste time here. I told him it's not working. I just need to take time out. So we were apart. We broke up for literally five months. And after five months, God reunited it. God did his thing. God came. He intervened because we were both praying about it as well. As he was praying on the other side, I was not aware of it. I was praying on this side and he was not aware of it. And after five months, we just reconnected. and it was We had one part in our relationship where we got separated. Um, I was not in a good zone myself. And communication was not 100 as what it should be and busy with work things from the past catching up and bloody 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 blah a lot of things happening and so it's um we decided to uh, to break up i was not giving the attention uh what she wanted slash needed slash deserved so it basically it was on me and uh, yeah, life continues and went with a group of uh, friends went to, uh, to Paris for, uh, for a big event, Men's Day for church. And there we started also to pray for the, for the single people. And, and it was very, very deep. And even when we were praying for the singles, also our pastor was there and uh, the guys. And, I'm not a cry baby, but my eyes were watery. I think, what, what is this? What is this going on, you know? And on the way back, it's a five hours drive. We discussed things, prayed more, talked about a lot of things. And very funny, a couple of days later, I get a phone call from, uh, from a certain lady I uh, <laughs> was involved with. And I was, okay. And I heard also from her side that she also uh, experienced a bit like, hey, an encounter of, hey, give this guy a call you know and yeah and after that we uh we went on talking just first and then i made a promise that we will talk now always uh every day and not you know uh, just make time and i kept that promise so dear friends about their breakup and then getting back together we are learning something here I've seen most of you guys, you find that you're chatting with a guy online and everything, you know, is going fine. Though, there are some things that are not all that clear. You don't want to go so deep into things to confirm if the guy is serious or he is not serious. You decide to block the guy. A small fight, you block the guy. <laughs> Which is very, very wrong. So, when this couple shared their love story with me before bringing it to you guys i had to listen everything word to word and i had questions to ask them again so one of the questions that i asked safi is that when you ended that relationship did you block alex because <laughs> you know let's break up everyone moves on she told me no bella I did not block Alex. What I did, I took his phone number, wrote it on my diary, and decided to delete his phone number on my phone. And on Alex's side, it was totally different how he reacted about the breakup because it is Safi who ended their relationship after seeing that this guy is taking me for granted. <laughs> he might be, you know, wasting my time. So it is better I end the relationship and talk to God about it. <laughs> yeah. So Alex was very angry about the breakup cause for him was used of, you know, breaking up. He's the one to tell the lady, you know, let's break up. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> so it was the first time in his life being rejected. <laughs> Oh man, men will always be men. <laughs> yeah. 
So what he did decided to delete everything concerning Safi. Literally guys, everything. He decided to cut the ties. So when I asked them the questions, that is when Safi opened more and more and told me, yes, after us breaking up, Alex never had my phone numbers, so was not able to contact me. And I asked her, please ask Alex, <laughs> if you did not contact him, was he going to contact you? Alex was like, he really wanted to contact her, but the problem is did not have any more her phone numbers, <laughs> but was thinking of her, was praying a lot, you know, about her. And when she called, it was God's answer from the prayers that Alex was praying to God about Safi. Another thing, guys, that we are learning here, you are chatting with a guy, everything you know is going well, but maybe there's some things you don't understand like I said not someone who will advise you block the guy unless there's some serious red flags that I'm seeing that this relationship won't go far <laughs> I tell you block the dude immediately <laughs> but if I see you can still work things out there is still hope I always tell you take a break you can decide to you know Take a break, don't give him much attention, move on with your life and see what will happen. Yes, that's the best way because if that guy is really, really interested in you, he's gonna look for you. But if you wait and wait, then you talk to God, you still have that feeling that that guy might be the one, you have that peace that Safi felt in her heart, you know, while dating Alex, then after giving him a break, you can decide, you know, to write a message to him and see if he will respond. But if he responds, don't be the one to push things to go further. No, leave everything to him so that he can take things into hands and show you the actions. Because when Safi contacted Alex, then they decided that, okay, let's give it a try again. Safi decided to, you know, stay aside and watch if Alex will be contacting her every day or it is going to return like before him being like, I'm so busy, you know, I don't have time to talk to you. <laughs> but when they returned together, Alex could talk to her every single day and he became consistent. Another thing, guys, that I need to add here, this will be the last concerning this. <laughs> I asked Safi, what was the problem? And I know you too is wondering, why was he acting weird? Why did he change? So Safi told me he changed because there are some things that he was going through and wasn't ready to open up to Safi. This is the same thing I've been advising you. You are dating a guy, get to understand him. I told you every man that joins online dating apps, they have got the reasons to why they are there. Everyone has got problems, guys. And if you want the relationship to work, then you have to understand a guy you are dating so that you know how to go about things and show the guy that you really understand him you really understand his situation but again don't be like oh bella is telling us to you know accept everything that the guy does no if there are some red flags of course don't close your eyes open your eyes <laughs> and act but if there are some things you can work out remember you have to work together to create your relationship please let us not be ladies who are into ready-made men men who are perfect <laughs> like an angel falling from heaven that man does not exist you have to keep that in your mind whether you are on online dating app searching or you are in real life there searching go deep into things before you take action and then went back again there, went on the knee, and it was a beautiful moment uh, in front of the waterfall. And she was very surprised that I went on her knee. And then, uh, yeah, then we went further. Uh, of course, before that, I had a talk 
with her uh, with her dad about it, and he was uh, he was fine with it. He was okay. He be he better. <laughs> and then we had, of course, uh, the African tradition, the labola. In Holland, then I would first call it by your by your bride or by your wife dot com. It's very funny because it's it's also an old Dutch tradition, but then it's the other way around. Then the wife's family is paying the husband, like okay, you're gonna take care of her the rest of your life. So <laughs> you have one box with gold, and then uh, good luck. Here is a bit different. Here you get a list. Uh, with the items, what you have to provide to prove that you can take care of their precious daughter, and it was a it was a beautiful thing. It's nice to to gather the things, and it's also nice to uh, to experience the whole labola part. If people don't know what it is, contact me. How it's from a white guy how to do that, because I was very open in it. Uh, I thought it was very funny. It was a lot of humor. Also how it was presented, it was funny, a beautiful tradition. And after that, it's a nice party. And then basically you're engaged. Connected. And ever since then, we have never looked back. I eventually introduced him to my parents. I felt ready, it was after a year we met. Remember darlings, I met him in 2015. So, after a year, I eventually introduced him to my family after we patched things up. And then on that day, the first day he met my parents, he asked for my hand in marriage. And I was just, and he did this, I was sitting there. <laughs> so I was taken back. It was a huge surprise. My parents were not expecting it. I wasn't expecting it. I was like, okay, we always talk about marriage. We spoke about moving forward. We knew where we both wanted to be in life. We knew that, okay, we're not here to waste each other's time. We will get married and, and, and we just need to follow the steps. And on that day, the first day he met my family, he asked for my hand in marriage and yeah, it was amazing. <coughs> Obviously, my, my parents accepted because they knew how long we were together and they could see the love that we had for each other. And then my parents uh, prepared the list now for the African wedding. So when the list was done, we prepared everything and darlings, he understood and he respected the culture. Everything that was asked on the list, he provided. There were no questions asked. There was not things like, oh, why must I do this? Why do you guys do that? No. He went, he got everything that was asked. And it was an amazing experience for both of us, for our families. We really, really enjoyed it. The fact that he made it so easy for himself to also want to learn the culture and want to understand where I'm from and how things are done and why it's done the way it's done. So that was amazing. So on the engagement day itself, I was so... Oh my goodness, I can't even explain it. I was so happy. I was just thanking God for where he has taken me to where I am at that current moment.
Yes. Darlings, I fasted, I prayed, I asked God to lead me to my husband, to a person who prays and understands who he is, and a person who is saved. Because it's very important for me, that was very, very important for me, because when you get married and you're facing situation, you're facing obstacles, you're facing challenges, there's things that you need as a couple, there's things that you're trusting God for. You know that you both have to get on your knees. You know that you both have to pray. If there's fasting involved you know that you both have to fast so that's why I was telling God and I was praying that whoever you send me must know who you are and must love you as well because if they don't know who you are and they don't love you they're not they will not be able to love me so my husband Alex has always been a Christian he got saved he got baptized and when I met him, he was a known believer. Uh, that was also how I knew that, you know what, this is, this is from God. And you know, then it was setting a date uh, for the wedding. The wedding itself was beautiful, a bit different how we do it in Holland. In Holland, you decide the two of you about basically everything. And if you take a planner or you plan everything yourself, you're in charge. In Africa, it's not. <laughs> you're not only a judge. A lot of people want to interfere and want to have their say, and that's yeah, that can cause some uh, some disturbances. And but it's also part of the culture. And you have to respect that and accept it. And in the end, it was a, yeah, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wedding. Uh, a lot of things also how we wanted it ourselves. And uh, yeah, I had my family members around me, my kids, my brother and my mother. The African wedding went wow. And then after a few months, um, the African wedding was like in February and then we got married in August of 2018. The wedding day was just the last breath to say thank you, Jesus, because this is it. It's, it's, it's a done deal. I have no words to express it. I was just so, <laughs> I was so happy. I was overly happy. I was blessed. I, I got, darlings, this, I like, I don't know. There's just a lot of things that happened on that day. It was raining. I was on my period. Yes, I was on my period and I was waiting for that moment because <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that moment because I had waited and the period decided to come. So yes, he had to wait and then we enjoyed that time afterward, but it was amazing because we eventually got two beautiful girls and I've got two beautiful bonus daughters that God has blessed me with. And they also loved it and the wedding, but also their relationship itself. They were very open in it, very yeah, understanding. And as long as you're happy, everything is good. So, and after the wedding, of course, uh, if a wedding night, gorgeous, Gorgeous place, beautiful, presidential suite, everything on it, bathtub with roses, but yeah. Eh? Let me just say, in the first month in the, how do you call it, the white bread weeks in Holland, the, the, with the broods bacon. It was it. So, then our first... Uh, our first baby was born uh, many moons later and gorgeous, beautiful experience. And, but how that happened, whole different story, but, and what happened after? Watch. Of course, our cultures are very different and because our different languages, but also different uh, 
uh, what the meanings of a word, also when you translate it, it can be very weird uh, in the other language. So you have to be aware of that, but that we had a lot of misunderstandings about those things. And I can tell you about, uh, for example, we have the word in Holland, the cat. Yeah, cat is the same as a cat, the male. But in the female cat, eh, we call it a puss. And when you go to South Africa and you call the puss what we mean for the female cat, it's completely different and you don't say that. You know, uh, the South Africans will know wh what I mean, but it's, uh, it's not a nice word there. But when you never, it's never told to you or you just don't know, then it's weird. And in those things you have a lot of misunderstandings, miscommunications, and, but you, you have to keep your peace. You have to understand each other that it's different. You come from a completely different culture, background, continent, uh, customs, language, all of those things. Uh, you have to learn to understand that it's different. You have to accept it and work on it. So we knew each other already for a long while uh, and already popped the question. Uh, I invited, of course, also Sev to Holland to come and meet my family in, in real. And yeah, that was amazing. Uh, from the start, it uh, was good, especially with, uh, yeah, with, with the two big girls, uh, good connection. Uh, and also with my mom and my brother, it was, uh, was good. So, and they accepted it straight away. And, and they knew already that I would never bring a white Dutch lady home. So, uh, for me, it was not, uh, not a worry and that's good. What's also in a relationship, what's important is your chemical connection. How are you doing? Uh, all the sayings, all the cliches, I think everybody knows that. When you buy a car, you first go sit in it and you do a test drive, you know, my, the my car might not be okay for you or be too small or be too big or too fast or whatever. You want leather seats, you want this, you want that. Uh, did we do all that? Um, till a certain moment. Till a certain moment. That yes, we had to know if the chemistry was there. Because I think that's also important in a relationship when you have that connection. But till a moment and then it was okay, not further. Because no real hanky panky before the marriage. And that was very sacred for Seth and I made it also sacred for myself. And that was quite good. And because you learn to know each other deeper first and not only the physical. So that was hard. Cannot say it was not hard. And but it's also very good for later. You will really see what I can bring. My advice to online dating and to you beautiful darlings out there who is searching for your husband online, the first thing I would advise you to do is to pray, yeah, and to know what it is that you want from this man you're searching for. And you pray about his categories, you pray about his personalities, you pray about his the meeting, because I believe when you are online dating, the minute a person contacts you and you contact them, that is already your, your first meeting, kind of. So you pray about all of that and you pray that God will reveal to you things that you cannot see when you're talking to these men. And be very clear to them, to the men, let them know who you are as a person. Do not hide your personality and characters. Do not hide your needs and wants to make them feel comfortable. When I had met Alex, it was not online, but I did tell him that, listen, I am not having sex with you. 
until we are married. So he knew that. It was in his head. He knew that, okay, this is what she wants and this is what she doesn't want. And I said, listen, me, God comes first and then you will always be second. So these are things that he knew. So that's what I mean by you need to be very transparent to the person that shows you that, listen, I am interested in you. They need to know who you are before they actually meet you. And I believe that a person will respect you on your honesty. Because sometimes as ladies, we tend to go there with a different facade. And that is what's giving the man the idea to treat you with what you come with. So if you come with lies, you come with desperation, you will get the same treatment and vice versa. So yeah, just be, be clear, be honest, let them know who you are. They have to respect you as a person and not the fact that you want a white man. That must not be uh, a topic of discussion because the the dating site you go to already is already specifying that it's an interracial. So the fact that you are there and he is there is because they will need to meet the opposite race. Okay. So that's my advice. Just enjoy, be honest, pray and pray and pray. Nothing comes without praying. Done. You're done. Okay, I've got more to say than done. <laughs> you can pray, but you also have to listen. You have to listen to what the Lord tells you. And sometimes you don't even understand when or what, but He will have His ways to let you know when this is yes or this is no. And in the past, I did online dating, and I have been a good boy, but also sometimes in the past, I've been a bad boy in there. And I can be honest about that because you can, you, when you do online dating, you will find them also. You find the good ones and you also find the bad ones. You don't know what they're for. Uh, a lot of them, they want something. They don't even care about you in person. Uh, women also are sometimes rascals or worse, if I can say. Can I say? Yeah, it goes, it, it's, it's from two ways. So when uh, the guy is sending, sending a specific D back to you, it's done. You know, uh, it's, it, he's not interested in you. When yourself are sending special pictures to him, and that means uh, not fully dressed or nicely dressed, keep your value. Because the real guy for you, he will value you for who you are and not how you look or how eh, uh, tight the tummy is uh, beautiful. You do in the gym, showing everything to everyone. Uh, that is from the outside. And he won't, he, the real guy for you will go for the heart. He will go for who you are. Not for all the beautiful pics because you are, when you do that, you're not alone. Gazillions of that. They show their bodies of this is me. Instead of meeting the guy, hey, this is me. Eh? Uh, the, the, the really who you are yourself and not only the body part because the body parts there are too many of them there who are selling their body parts and in general that will not succeed not to get that guy to capture his heart and also not to keep him because the men want more they want real, they want a woman, they want love. They want that. They, you can play hard to catch. Nothing wrong with that. Let them wait, let them take the effort, and let them come. And I know a lot of them, they say they come and they don't come. I've done that myself also. It's not cool. You know, the embarrassed later. And... Uh, the reasons why is probably, or eh, for me it was, I also couldn't afford back then for one certain way, you know, and there are many men also who just cannot, oh, I take a plane and go, eh? do they have kids, eh? do, are they raising kids, can they go away for a couple of weeks easily with work, can they afford it with money, uh, 
do they what what the surrounding does it say oh you're going to africa for your woman oh, bah, 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 bah. or to or to asia or to you know south america whatever those things do not matter it's about be your beautiful self and value that and then pray about it listen and your guy or your lady will show up patience and very be aware that the false snakes there don't step on them <laughs> you know they will bite you and they're not for you and it's not only the beauty from the outside what is capturing your heart so mm. it's a lot of things going on online and especially nowadays more and more with all the social media internet dating so many countries are involved and same for the guys when the ladies when you never met them ask you money it's a trap but for the women it's the same some guys also ask money you know or they want this or reassurance or whatever don't fall for it old fashioned guy comes first he has to make the first step not the lady comes traveling <laughs> put all her savings in there to travel there and, and the guy might even be not there or you know not who he says he is you will go for don't do it let him come if the relationship is going good online the connection is there he has to come first is that wrong set in this no yeah no. i think it's the man should be the man you take the lady out to dinner first that's how they do it and you pay <laughs> don't let the lady pay for the first dinner even when you don't have a lot be honest yeah be honest i'm not rich i have a normal job everybody thinks europe is flipping loaded yes oh yeah in Holland it's a rich country but not everyone is rich yeah you know when you see what the bread here costs what the rent here costs you know uh rent here in Holland is already three times a month salary in a lot of countries so don't look at those things and traveling is expensive mm. be honest yeah be real and don't sell yourself as the queen while well, you are Yeah, the yeah, the cleaning lady. Yeah. Don't sell yourself. The king. Yeah, why are the cleaning men? Just be, be honest in that. Yeah. About what you do, experience, and also, money is important. When you are further on the ladder in dating, be honest about it. Doesn't matter if you have nothing. I came from my own company. When I met you, and I was in deep problems. I was in deep problems financially, but budgeting, making priorities, and just go set priorities. I I don't pay off this now. I book a ticket, you know, and good thing what I did there. Yeah. <laughs> so setting priorities is important, and don't talk the same talk with with five or six different ones. Mm. You will see more who you like with, who you like to talk with. Nothing wrong with that. You can chat chat with three, four, five, some chat chat with 20. You will never get to know one each other when you talk with 20 others. Keep that number low. When you don't like something about someone, be honest, skip. Next one to talk with. Sounds horrible, but a good truth. Yeah. Because they are not for you. That is the listening to God. Because he is letting you know. Make your list. Mm -hmm. the, the what nuts. If I want this, I want that. No, I don't like this or I don't like that. Abusive, boom, go. They are calling you at 10 o'clock in the morning and you're not answering can be that the guy is at work. At my work, <laughs> I cannot answer the phone. Simple. You know, and sometimes I can answer the phone only at 11 o'clock because then the shift is done. Mm -hmm. So, and then sometimes you have only a short break, you know, and yeah, 
But that's for everyone different. <laughs> but those yeah. are important things also to let each other know. And after that, you call in important moments or before you go to work. Mm. Let each other know that you are there and ask how you're doing. No reply. Or after three, four days reply is not there for you. Because when they travel, they will let you know up front. Yeah. I will be not there for a couple of days. Call you after. So it's a big thing that online dating. Mm. It's a big thing. A lot of people make a lot of money there. Uh -huh. So and, uh, you're not there to lose money. You're not there to make money. You're there to find love and happiness. That's your goal. Mm. Be smart. <laughs> and a small thing what for me was always uh, basically a debt doer. Upkeep money. Can you send me some money? I don't have money for groceries. Uh, I have a party. I don't have money for clothes. Can you send me money? All those things, name them. Yeah. You know, the ladies probably some will know what it means. It's not attractive for men. If the man wants to give you money, he will come with it. You know, you can let them know. You know, I am... Eh? Uh, I don't make a lot and eh, I have to budget a lot of things. Mm. Then he knows and if he's fine, he will can send you something for uh, an extra. Mm. Just for a thing, but don't expect it always to be there. Yeah, Because that's a lot of guys, they don't like it like that. They will break off that part and because they will go on to the next. Yeah. It's basically very simple. Even when you show you the goodies, then they're not for you. Then they want only the, the game. They will not. In, they are not interested in the real deal. So that's the value you put on yourself. Don't fall for that. And don't go for that. Are we dating exclusive? They have to send me upkeep money, or I go date with other men. The men, a lot of men. I'm included. Said okay, goodbye. Yeah, because yeah. you're not interested yeah. in me. You're interested in the cash. Bye bye. And I'm not the only one in that. So don't do that. Is it bad when I say it? <laughs> I think it's just honesty. Babe, did you mm. have any ladies? Uh, what kind of ladies do you have coming towards you? What kind of ladies? Yeah. What What were the women that you were giving a big cross and a green tick to? Green tick was... Because you, you can also see if they're educated or not. Yeah, you can see that, and if their education is proper, yeah. then you basically also know they are more smart. They will, they can take of the care of themselves basically. Yeah. And uh, if you like a smart lady or uh, an uneducated lady, doesn't matter, can be perfect. But what is your match? You know. Uh, some without the education are more smart than the highest educated ladies. So it's not about that. Mm. It's about the level you are looking for. Mm. And or what is matching with yourself. Uh, if you want an intelligent lady, go for the intelligent lady. For the ladies, it's the same. You want an intelligent man or a working class guy. You have to be honest with that. Mm. Uh, look for that. Uh, what is your match? Same as when the, we did our test in the love language. Yeah. It's beautiful. You have to be connecting with the other guy. You speak the same love language. But do you know each other's love language? Those things are important to look for. And uh, the knock off for me, the Red Cross, was a uh, root language. Uh, Asking all those online, uh, oh, let's uh, video uh, naked. Okay. It's, you know, those things. Yeah, it happens. There's a red cross, a eh? red right flag. I'm not interested in eh? uh, in those persons. Maybe it sounds wrong. Mm. And you have the ones who are uh, there also to find the true companion. Sometimes it's matching, sometimes not. Sometimes it's very nice to chat. And that's it. Nothing wrong with that. And yeah, but you will find it. But you have to know for yourself what is a red flag and what is a green flag. And a red flag, bye. What was yours? 
apart from a woman asking to chat online, to chat naked online? Um, what else? One was a very, <laughs> can you send me money? Okay. I'm sure that yeah, the, mon- the money issues. And in those days, I also no, was not, uh, I had to budget myself uh, already for big time. So I think, hey, the money I have, I have got so many good causes for that. <laughs> I would have sent it to someone who I never met in real. Mm. You know, after you met in real, then it can be different. But till then, nah, for me, no go. You will never see the money again. And probably you will never see the lady or the man. Ever. Yeah. You know, because they're not interested in you. They're interested in your wallet. Mm. And it goes also for ladies. I also heard of ladies who invested so much in men and never saw the guy. Mm-hmm. Just for the dream of having the love and the perfect man. So, yeah. Be real, make it real. Be and real, make it real. Uh, sounds good, huh? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, but make, make your list what is... Because for everyone is different. Yeah. You know, um, you would have your things, but you will set off how mm. guys talk to you, for example. And we all have that. The red flags, green flags, and treat them like that. Red flag, go. Run. That's what Jesus will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, flee, yeah. run away. Because it's bad news. Yeah. You want good news. Yeah. So, also something what is very important when you are online or thinking about it, it's one thing, expect to get hurt. But at the same time, you also expect that you're going to hurt other people, even unknowingly, unwillingly. It will happen. Uh, the same guy who is uh, pressing the like on you and he sends you uh, an opening sentence because he doesn't know what to say because she's so beautiful, you his type. And you think, well, hey, this is so cliche, boom, you send them out of the way, like that. He's hurt. Yeah. The other way around can be the same. So, expect that. Not every everybody is, is McDreamy, of how you call him. Yeah. <laughs> Not all guys are like that. Not all ladies are, who is, for the men, the most desirable. Mm-hmm. You know? Um... There's so many people out there who are clicking on certain people and you have just have to stand out of that and you have to be also blessed or so lucky that it's the message is being read and that you can start a conversation. So expectations, you know what they say? Expectations is the mother of, mother of all ups. <laughs> when you expect, you always get disappointed. So expectations should be a bit low and just be happy with everything what comes out. But you're going to hurt people and people will hurt you. It sounds nasty, eh? That online business. Yeah. That's why take a plane when you like someone. <laughs> True. Take a plane. We done. Guys, I totally agree with Alex. When you are on online dating apps, you have to accept to be hard. <laughs> yeah, most of the times I laugh a lot when I get your DMs on Instagram. You're like, Bella, this guy broke my heart. Can you imagine? Bella, this guy did this to me. I'm so heartbroken right now. I don't even feel like eating. Bella, what is wrong? Why is that they talk to me and then disappear? Am I that ugly? <laughs> Do you know why I laugh? I laugh because I've been there, guys. I have been there. (laughs) So, by the way, guys, I remember when I first joined online dating apps, (laughs) I got a guy from America. The guy was so cute, so juicy. (laughs) There is a friend of mine who likes this word. One time I was sitting with, you know, a guy online. I was like, oh my God, I found this guy. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, Bella is so juicy. <laughs> so that American guy was really juicy, so cute, you know, exactly my type. <laughs> my type of guy that I wanted, a tall, light-skinned, you know, guy. <laughs> Masculine. <laughs> yeah. 
So we started chatting and the guy was so good. He started opening up about his life. He had one kid from his past relationship and after chatting for a while it was like can we chat on whatsapp i was like it's okay so we exchanged whatsapp and then i started dreaming i told you guys ali roga wanawake amekufa <laughs> so i was there dreaming of getting married to this cute american guy <laughs> And yeah, the conversation went really, really good until the guy told me, so I want to see more of you. Send me more of your photos and I'm going to send you more of my photos. So he sent his photos. Oh my God. <laughs> I kept on falling in love with him more and more. So to cut the story short, after him sending his photos, I had to send my own photos. Guy wait for the response. The guy was like, oh, you're a very beautiful lady, but I don't want to waste your time. You are not my type. I think we should end it here, maybe remain friends. Oh my God, it hurts. Ouch. <laughs> I was really, really hurt. <laughs> I tell you, it was in the evening, but... When night came, I kept on thinking about it because I didn't have enough experience with these things. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, the thing is that guy was the most genuine man because he never wanted to waste my time. And it's not a crime for a guy to be like, you are not my type. Some of you chat with these guys for the first time. They make a video call, talk to you. What I want to let you know is that not all men are courageous enough to tell you that you are not my type. I can't keep on wasting your time. That is when you find they just disappear. They ghost you just like that. So don't take it negatively. Take it in a positive way. When a guy ghosts you, he asks you for the photos, you send them and then... <laughs> he never come back don't be like i'm so ugly do you think guys i'm ugly hell no i'm not ugly <laughs> but at that time i was like maybe i am ugly maybe because i'm not slim maybe because white men want you know slim ladies <laughs> That is what I was telling myself, but I was just lying to myself. So with my experience, I'm here to tell you if a guy goes to you, if a guy, you know, makes a video call with you and never return, don't take it negatively. Take it the positive way and keep moving forward. That guy that is right for you will come. And another thing is that you liking a guy doesn't mean a guy should like you. <laughs> Because when a guy talks to you, he knows if you guys are compatible. He knows if he feels something <laughs> towards you. <laughs> he knows if he wanna, you know, keep on pursuing the relationship. He knows. But if he doesn't feel anything, he doesn't feel any butterflies in the stomach, <laughs> of course, if he is not courageous enough, he's gonna run so that he cannot hurt you, so that he cannot waste your time. <laughs> So darling, that's our story. I hope you get inspired, motivated, and encouraged. Thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed and God loves you. Bye. One more thing. <laughs> One more thing. We all make mistakes. I made a gazillion. I can write them down. 25 books of my mistakes oh, in my gosh. life. Okay. You made your mistakes. Yeah. We all make them. Yeah. Doesn't matter. As long as you know where you're heading, and after that you go to Jesus. After or before? Before, and but also after. Because you will make the mistake. Yeah. We all make the mistake. Yeah. All mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then pick yourself up and continue. Yeah. And then try not to make them again. Yeah. And when you make them again, talk right. to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I talked a lot with that guy, yes? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You know doesn't well. matter, doesn't matter. You know and well. Then, and then it's good. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Stay All right, blessed. darling. Stay blessed. Thank you for watching. Mwah. Bye. Bye bye. So, dear friends, before I end this video, I have good news. And the good news is 
This couple is on YouTube. They are content creators. I know you are already in love with them. So please go and check out their YouTube channel. Their YouTube channel goes by the name of It's Our Perfectly Perfect Family. They do videos about motherhood, lifestyle, faith. Also, sometimes they give relationships, you know, in marriage. Trust me, guys, you are going to enjoy a lot their content. It's gonna inspire you more and more. So if you know you love Bella, please go check out their YouTube channel, watch their videos, and after watching their videos, please show your support by subscribing. Support our sister, support this family by checking out their YouTube channel. I repeat, it goes by the name of it's a perfectly perfect family. Thank you once again. May God bless you. So dear friends, we have come to an end of our today's video. Thank you so much for watching till now. May God bless you. Please, if you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this love story and learn something. Watch my other videos too. They are super good. You've got lots of things to learn from those videos. Comment below what you think about this video. I would like to know. Subscribe please if you have not subscribed and thank you for joining my family. <laughs> God bless you. Until next time guys, I love you so much. You're always here in my heart. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.